Okay, let's look at these electrodynamics questions from all of the matric past papers. There's not so many of them. They don't always ask about this in all the papers. So it says to you, the coils of an AC generator make one complete rotation. The resulting graph for the output EMF is shown below. The position B on the graph, which is your maximum current or maximum voltage there, it's a voltage graph. The position B on the graph is obtained when the plane of the coil is at an angle of what to the magnetic field. So it's a maximum. So you know you can immediately rule out the 60 degrees and the 120 degrees because you get the maximum um, flux when you cut the most fields. And here the answer is A, zero degrees. You kind of have to have good visualization skills to figure out why this is the case, but it does work that you get the maximum um, the maximum flux when you are at zero. And then the other maximum will be at 180. So number two, a DC current passes through a rectangular wire loop, OPQR, placed between two poles of a magnet as shown below. Okay, so obviously he has the North Pole, there's the South Pole. So this is the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, and it's showing you the current is going up this arm and down the other arm. So it says to you, which two segments of the loop will experience an electromagnetic force when the loop is in the position above? Well, if you put your fingers in that um, three pole position, you're going to see that if you put the fingers on the PQ and the OR, but nothing's going to happen. It has to be on these two bits up the side here. So the answer here is going to be C, OP and QR this section over here and this section over here. If you do that um, left, hand, uh, left hand rule, you will see that uh, that's, that's where the things are. If you put your fingers and you try and put your uh, finger through the field, that's, um, you'll see that the, long e uh, the short edges where the axis of rotation is are not experiencing the force because of the way they lie relative to the magnetic field. Number three, which one of the following changes may lead to an increase in the EMF, but without changing its frequency? So the frequency depends on the speed of rotation. So we have to rub out this answer here because changing the speed of rotation will change the frequency. And besides this says decrease and we wanted an increase. So this one is wrong on two counts. So how do we get to increase EMF, we know that the things that increase EMF is uh, the area of the coil, the speed of rotation, and the strength of the magnetic field. So decreasing the resistance of the coil, no, that's not going to count. Increasing the resistance of the coil, no, that's not going to count. But what we can do is increase the area of the coil. Remember in grade 11, they teach you that BA cos theta, where B is the field, A is the area of the coil, and cos is the angle it makes to the flux. So where in there do you have resistance? There's no resistance in that formula, so it's not going to affect it. Changing the resistance will not affect it. Which one of the following combinations regarding the energy conversions in electric motors and electric generators is correct? So well, if we look for the generator, we must have electrical, we must be making electricity, we must be turning movement to electricity. So we, here over here, that leaves us with these two, B and D. If we have a motor, we are taking electricity as an input and turning it into motion. That leaves us with those two over there in the motor. So the only one that's in both of them is D, Motor takes electrical energy and turns it into movement. The generator turns movement and turns it into electrical energy. So the answer is D. Which one of the following energy conversions, they're big on energy conversions, you find them in the questions as well, the long answer questions. Which one of the following energy conversions takes place when an AC generator is in operation? So generators take movement and they turn it into electricity. 
So number five must be B mechanical to electrical. So let's find question number six now. A learner lists the following as factors that affect the magnitude of the current induced in an AC generator. The number of windings of the coil, yes, the more windings, the bigger the EMF. The strength of the magnetic field, yes, the stronger the magnetic field, the bigger the current. The speed of the rotation of coil, yes, the faster the current, the more um, EMF you can get or more current you can get, more rotations, more speed. So number six, the answer is one, two, and three, the answer is D. Now it says to you, the direction of the induced current in the coil of a generator depends on, they want the direction, okay? So the length of the coil's got nothing to do with it. The speed of rotation has got nothing to do with it because that just affects how much current you've got, not its direction. And the strength of the magnetic field, that is how much current, not its direction. The only thing that will change it is C, the direction of the magnetic field. Number eight, the speed of rotation of the coils in an AC generator is increased. So if we increase the speed of rotation, we will increase the frequency and we will also increase the EMF. Okay. Which one of the following combinations of frequency and output voltage will occur? Frequency increase, output voltage increase. It must be answer A. Then we come to question number, that's not question number nine. This is question number nine. Graph P, so which is graph P? This is graph P. See here is graph P. Graph P represents the output EMF of an AC generator. Graph Q, that's this dotted one, dashed one, is the output EMF after a change has been made. Okay, so look at the graph before you look at it and try and figure out what the answer is. Look here, on P I have one whole wave. And on Q, I have peak trough, one wave, peak trough, two waves. So Q has got twice the frequency. And if we look at the EMF, the voltage went from maximum voltage for P is V. The maximum voltage for Q is 2V. So we've got two times the frequency and two times the EMF or the voltage. So how do we increase the frequency? We have to increase the speed of turning. And as a happy result, if you increase the speed of turning, you automatically increase the voltage. So what have we done? We have done C, the speed of rotation has been doubled. If it was A, then we would get the increased voltage, but not the increased frequency. If it was B, same difference, we've got the bigger surface area. So we will have a bigger voltage, but we will not change the frequency. And D as well, increasing the strength of a magnetic field will increase the voltage, but it will not increase the frequency. So the only way to do this is to increase the frequency. In number 10, in a DC generator, the current to the external circuit is delivered through DC. Remember DC is always the split ring commutator and the slip ring belongs to AC. So it is D the split ring. Look, here comes another energy conversion. Which one of the energy conversions takes place when a DC motor is in operation? Remember, we need motors to make things move, so the output must be kinetic or mechanical, and we are starting with electrical energy because that is what a motor does. It converts electricity to movement, so number D. Let's look for number 12 now. Number 12, the diagram below shows a current carrying conductor. And look, the current carrying conductor is showing you the X. So remember, we've got the X and the dot, and you're supposed to imagine the arrow. So this is going into the page, and this is going out of the page. But we've got the one going into the page. The diagram below shows a current carrying conductor 
lying in a uniform magnetic field directed to the right, the current flows into the page. Which one of the following arrows shows the direction of the force experienced by the conductor due to the magnetic field? Okay, so now we are not trying to make a current. Okay, if we're trying to make a current, we are generating. Okay, if we are trying to make movement, we are now a motor. So in order to figure this out, you have to use your fingers in that um, Fleming's left hand or right hand rule. So this one is the generator. You use your right hand because it's right and good to have electricity and you use the motor, you use your left hand. So what you have to do is you have to get your left hand into that three right angles to each other configuration. And then I always like to start with the magnetic field. Remember, it's like on your fingers are F, B, I, the force, the uh, field and the current and the current is the shocking finger if i pop this finger at you you will be shocked okay and then the b one is the one i use first so i get my forefinger which is not the shocking finger it's the pointy finger i put my pointy finger in the direction of the magnetic field and then when the pointy finger is in the right place i twist my hand so that the current is going into the board you just twist from your elbow or from your wrist keeping the pointy finger in the right direction and then you'll see your shocking current figure finger is going into the paper which leaves your thumb moving in which direction your thumb is moving downwards okay and that is answer c so like with all of this i say to you i always put it's confusing with your fingers i always try and use this finger first and keep this finger in position and then rotate around with the other ones okay number 13 which one of the following actions will not cause an increase in the induced emf will not cause an increase if the coil is rotated okay if we rotate the coil faster that is definitely going to increase the emf increasing the strength of the magnetic field that's also going to increase the EMF. Increasing the number of turns in the coil, that will also increase the EMF. Replacing the coil with a lower resistance. Yes, that is indeed our correct answer. The resistance of the wire is not playing a role here in my conducting. Okay, and here are the last two questions. Some learners decided to build a small electrical generator in the laboratory. They then used this generator to investigate how the magnitude of the EMF would change as the magnetic field strength changed. Which one of the following is correct regarding the variables? Okay, so if we have a look here, mm -hmm, we need a dependent and independent and a control variable. And the independent starts with I, I change this, okay? And then the dependent is what I'm going to measure and the control I keep the same okay so anything that we are measuring or changing cannot be in the control variable box so it says how is the EMF changing as the field strength changes so the magnetic field strength can definitely not be a control variable because we have um, said that we are changing that, okay? So what have we got here? We are measuring the magnitude of the EMF, so that's also not a control variable, which is leaving us with this one, C, number of turns of coil of the generator. Well, if they built the generator, it didn't say anything about them changing the structure of the generator. But let's just check here. The dependent must be what I am measuring and the independent is what I am changing. Okay, so they are investigating how the EMF changes. So they are going to measure, okay, which so this one must be the dependent as they change the field strength. So this one must be the independent. So this one makes sense. Number C, this is fitting in. I measured the EMF. I changed the um, field strength. So the answer is most definitely C over here. 
and now this last one which is from 2020 an AC generator generates a current with a frequency of 50 Hertz okay so that means there are 50 waves like this of EMF per second okay that's what 50 Hertz means because a Hertz is a per second so it says to you the number of times that the peak current is produced in one second so when I read this question I wondered how nitpicky they were because if you have a look here it says maximum so this is maximum and this is technically a minimum on a graph okay but this is a peak and this is a peak in terms of what we use the electricity for so there are actually two peaks in one cycle and there are 50 cycles in a second so there are 100 peaks in one second so the answer is D but I did wonder about the wording because is a maximum and a minimum the same but it appears like this is not such a mm, nitpicky question as sometimes physics is nitpicky so the answer is 100 every cycle has two peaks there are 50 peaks a second so 50 times 2 gives you 100